uh, to simplify it, just to simplify it, and it's a, a long document, but basically it's a fee that is assessed to have fire readiness. It's called a fire readiness fee, which means that you are assessed a fee on the portion of the fire department that has to be there no matter what. For example, we have to have a fire station. Even if you never have a fire at your particular house, we have to have a fire station built. So that portion that's that are fixed costs for, for everybody, you can be assessed a portion of that, a fee on a portion of that. And let me make one thing clear because there's some misinformation out there. Nobody in any way, shape, or form will ever be turned away for fire service in the city of St. Petersburg or any of the people that we have cooperative agreements with. That will never happen. So when people are saying that's going to happen, that is just flat out not true. Um, so the, um, the attorneys came, a legal firm was hired to set it up um, legally. There's a lot of, uh, there's an ordinance that has to happen. There's a uh, process that has to happen to do that. And council voted to go forward with, with the, having the attorneys set up the process. The process has now been set, set up and uh, council has voted the first time to approve it to, to go to a public hearing, which comes up this Thursday. Um, and I voted against it um, both times. For, for a variety of reasons, but basically the fee itself is on, uh, for, for fire readiness, you're paying a fee to have the fire department ready to serve you if needed, um, is how it's being billed. So, so we're on a second reading now, is that, yes. did I understand that correctly? Yes. And what was the vote? It was a six to two vote. I was one of the no's and uh, Councilman Wingate Newton was a no vote as well. Okay. So, um, what are the differences between the two proposals? You have the flat fee, um, which I think in the Times they refer to as a regressive tax. Yes. Um, and then you have the uh, raising property rates by one mil. Um, explain to me the difference and what that would mean for homeowners. Well, within the fire service fee, you have a flat fee, which is assessed on everybody the same. So it may be $5 a month or maybe $6 a month. And what would happen is, if you're an individual person that owns a small home, you're assessed the $5 a month. And if you're Walmart that owns a big, huge store, you're assessed the $5 a month. That's one portion of the fee, of the fire fee. The other portion of the fire fee is based on the value of the buildings on the land. So then that's a variable portion. So then if you're Walmart, your fee would be more, would be a lot more than an individual homeowner's would be. That portion of your fee would go up more. So there's some uh, element, the feeling is that there's more of an element of fairness in doing it that way, having a combination of the two tied into the fire fee. Um, the other option that we have is to raise the millage rate. And it would be a, approximately one mil that we, we would need to raise the millage rate. Um, so what would, what would that mean for homeowners? Like, what does that translate into, mm. you know, it's, those are, Maybe hard numbers to crunch, but no. I think I think a mill, if I, and I, I could double check this for you, but I think a mill is one dollar per thousand of value. So if your house is worth a hundred thousand dollars, it'd be a hundred dollars extra on your on your uh, property taxes. So is there a feeling that maybe going with the flat fee, even though there is a component in there to kind of have places, Walmart was your example, right. that they do end up paying more based on the value. Is there still, though, a feeling that it's maybe a little bit disproportionate to people who have lower, um, lower cost homes versus people who have multi-million dollar? Y yes, homes? yes, absolutely. You would pay more. The the people that have less would pay less on the on the property tax, and the people who have a lot more expensive house would pay more on the on the on the uh, property tax. Um, on the fire readiness fee, it's more equalized, but for me, that's including things like churches, nonprofits, and people who, seniors who are on Social Security, seniors who are homesteaded and don't pay any property tax, now they're going to have to start paying the fire readiness fee. And I think that's, there's an element of fairness there that I want to maintain, and I, I was, um, it bothered me, especially as a social worker, that, that now we're going to say this is a fairer way to do it because a grandma who lives on $800 a month of Social Security now is going to pay a little bit into the system. Well, I don't want grandma who's living on $800 a month Social Security to pay into the system. I'd rather pay a little extra myself than have grandma have to pay that, that extra. I mean, that's just how I feel. Um, um, so what is it that you would ultimately like to see happen? Well, I proposed uh, over a year and a half ago to set up a commission to look at uh, different ways we could save money and it was voted down by council and administration was uh, fairly uh, negative towards it. 
to look at things like could are there services we could combine with the county to save money you know and and I was told we're doing all of that we could possibly do there's nothing else on that we can do but then the idea of consolidating the police communications department came up and right out of hand the police chief said no we can't do that that's impossible but there was no research behind it there was no I've seen no data that backs that up I've just heard no that's impossible well that doesn't make me feel like we've looked at everything we could do to save money and some of our basic services the city of St. Petersburg would never consolidate like fire service police service basic services that the public expects us to control and, and to, to be able to provide to them However, things like the communications department of the police department, combining that with the county, could make a lot of sense because every single time one of our citizens calls for the fire department for service, they're not calling the city of St. Petersburg, they're calling the county and the, the fire department's being dispatched through the county. Why couldn't we do the same thing with our police department and potentially have savings there? I think there's potential savings there. Um, until we've exhausted every one of those possibilities, I'm not ready to say I'm, I want to raise any fee or any tax. I want to make sure we look at every single thing and look at how we can do that. The, the other thing I'd like to see is why not have an emergency meeting then and talk about economic development and what are the things, what are the things that are thriving in this economy because some businesses are doing very well and how do we recruit them to St. Petersburg? How do we do something different? And we have an economic development team and they do what they do. But in this economy, you might need to do something different. And I haven't seen us really try to do something completely different than what we've done. I've seen us cut, I've seen us add, I've seen us, us you know, cut, cut uh, services, cut, um, cut products, you know, that, that we buy and try to save money that way, not fill positions, things like that. But I haven't seen us fundamentally say, can we do this differently? Can we really look at it and save money in a different way by doing it completely differently? And businesses are forced to do that every day and I think um, I'd like to see the city do a little bit more of that. Um, now you said that the um, the first reading of this passed um, six to two. Correct. Um, I mean I know five things, actually five to two. Five to two, uh, okay. One council member was, was out of town. Okay, okay. So. Um, I know sometimes things have a tendency to change once you put it into a public hearing scenario and you <laughs> sure. start getting all these you know feisty residents up there telling you what they think. Do you have any um, guesses as to, I mean, do you think that this is going to carry on second reading, or have you heard anything from constituents about it? Well, well here's what I'll say about it. We voted to pay the attorneys $60,000, up to $60,000, to set up the process for doing the fee before we voted to approve the fee, and it requires six votes. And I said at that time, I'm a no vote, I'm not going to change my mind. If anyone else up here thinks they might change their mind, they should say that now before we spend $60,000 setting up a fee that may not even get approved. So if they do change their mind, I think that's a huge waste of taxpayer dollars. That's $60,000 that we threw away to pay attorneys to set up a possibility of a fire service fee that we now voted no. Um, so if only one of them changes their vote, that means it's a no, and we've already spent the $60,000 having the attorney set up the process. That doesn't make sense. I think there's an obligation. I would be very unhappy with that if that happened. Um, now, from like I said, for me, I'm, I'm a no vote. I thought about it. I researched it. I decided to vote against it, and I made that very clear that I had no intention of changing my mind. I've heard nothing that has made me change my mind. Um, but if the, fa if the fact is people were having doubts about it, they shouldn't have approved the money to set it up in the first place before they voted to approve it. And I thought that was a mistake, and I said that, but nobody agreed with me on that.